we'll have to cut this bit. <laughs> no, I'm going to leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> this is the new intro. Hello and welcome to episode two of the Ragamuffin Music Podcast. Uh, I'm Alex. I'm James. And I'm Dan. Uh, thank you to everyone that checked out the first episode. It's been really cool to see people giving it a listen. Um, and if you're new, it's kind of like a bit of a book club, but for music. We talk about the latest releases, what we're listening to. Uh, we would talk about gigs, but they can't happen at the moment. Um, we'll still talk about gigs, just with nostalgic tears in our eyes. Yeah. yeah. In episode 100, when we can finally go to gigs again. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> Have we made any New Year's resolutions, boys? I haven't, personally. Um, I'm not usually a resolution kind of person. Uh, just take take the year as it comes. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know uh, what lies in store for us over the next few months. Let's just see how it goes. Take each day as it comes, really. I think mine's not necessarily a New Year's resolution. It's just sort of something I've learned from the whole lockdown and pandemic kind of thing is to just not take things for granted as much. Like, to apply that to music, going to gigs and stuff is things we do all the time. And we haven't done that for nearly a year now. And, yeah, it's just kind of something you'd sort of take for granted, I guess. So now it's just sort of, when, when we do get to go back to gigs again, I'll sort of be savouring the moment a bit more, I think. Yeah, that's that's a good one. I don't think I've made any really. But like with that, when with the gigs, what's the nice at the moment is even the situation we're in. Um, when you get reminders of gigs you've been to, like I, like today, um, had like good old Snapchat memories pop up, and two years ago today we all went to go and see Architects and Beartooth in Wembley Arena. Um, and I think it just makes me appreciate all those times and the fact that we've been able to go to so many gigs like previously, and it just gets me even more excited to go again. I think to me that used to be a nice reminder and now it's just sort of like a <laughs> look what the life you used to have. <laughs> you have you have no other hobbies or interesting things. No, I, I miss it. it. Makes me realise how often we used to go to gigs as well. Yeah, every like one or two months it felt like. It felt like we always had something booked up and ready to go to. Um, and now it's just a waiting game of whether we've got gigs booked up that we have now like ready waiting for and if we have any chance at all at going to see any this year but we'll see yeah well since our last episode i know that me and james went and listened to dan's album recommendation which was a spanish love songs brave faces everyone um i absolutely loved it uh kick and beachfront property were the two songs that stood out for me um and i think dan hit the nail on the head he was just like it's a very hopeless sounding album and i loved it yeah i i really enjoyed it as well it wouldn't be something i'd necessarily pick out myself i don't think um those two songs you said kick beachfront property and i also quite liked optimism um at the minute there'll be someone who'll be interested in seeing a festival not necessarily a headliner level just yet uh i think i'd need to listen to them a lot more to see if they develop into that kind of band that i'll have more interest in so i think maybe a bit more of a delve into their music is uh warranted Glad you like some guys. Uh, I also listened to the Seaway album, Big Vibe. Here we go. Which you two both said it was a big vibe. Um, it might be a big vibe for you. It was not my vibe. Uh, <laughs> um, well, like, it was better Seaway than I've heard before. Um, I think Wild Things and Pathetic were the two of the songs that stood out more for me. But I don't know if it reminds me more of the latest Neck Deep. All distortions are intentional. Um, it, I don't know. It's just, it was okay. It's not something that like grabbed me and I was really enjoying. It seems, like I said, it seems better than the other stuff I've been played before. Maybe it will grow on me eventually. But um, it's not my complete vibe just yet. Is it? Is there anything that you can compare it to, like, food-wise? What I compare it to food-wise? Um, yeah. Oh, so you, you called it a cheese sandwich before, didn't you? I did. You can hear that comparison explained in episode one. Um, a bit of buttered bread, maybe. Like, it has its place. 
like as a quick little snack sometimes, just a bit of buttered bread. Um, n- not my go-to in the slightest. If it's there, you know what, I'll have it. It's a bit of buttered bread, it's a bit of food. Um, but I prefer a l- lovely triple stack sandwich of some delicious foods instead. I like the way you said, if it's there, you go for it. As If, you if just it's there, I go for it. Find, find a slice of buttered bread just out in the street. Uh, you never know. Oh, it's... I'll have a bit of that. A little a bit of butter bread, very underrated, I think. It's a, just a little snack, you never know. Midnight snack, a bit hungry. Could be binge watching some TV shows late at night. And uh, you know what? Just need a bite to eat. Bit of butter bread, nice and easy and simple. Like Seaway. If I could just steer us back to the topic of this podcast. No. <laughs> and back to music. Back onto food. We're a food Should podcast we now. <laughs> We've changed. Should we talk about some news? Let's talk about some news. Um, I think the, I guess, top story is that the King 810 vocalist David Gunn was spotted at the Capitol riots mm. earlier in the month. Naughty boy. I mean... He had an explanation though, didn't he? He did. He said on his Instagram um, he was there for the purposes of filming a music video. Uh, so I guess we'll have to just wait and see what the video turns out to be. Well, that's the thing. If the, if there is now no music video, then he's a liar. <laughs> yeah. But he said he didn't do anything. He didn't, you know, go anywhere. He wasn't supposed to be. He wasn't trespassing anywhere. But, I mean, I, I wouldn't go to a riot just to film it. No, no. You don't want to be associated with uh, all of that. So let, let's see what happens with King. Um, we'll talk about the album review in a little bit. And I guess it will all tie in with that. They don't have the best image around uh, the genre, so this certainly hasn't helped them. Well, I don't know much about the political persuasion, but they love guns. I know that. Yeah, they they have a weird backstory to them. Uh, Flint, Michigan, is not one of the nicest places. As you, they kind of show a lot off with their videos. They show what they stand for. They've made songs about like the water crisis they have over there which fair play to them try and get recognition and raise money for that they've done good things for it uh but yeah they're not uh the most popular band in metal for sure um and in some other news mike shinoda of lincoln park is producing music live on twitch at the moment right now (laughs) well (laughs) right this second as we speak yeah that's cool that's that's a nice avenue to have it's a little bit different you don't see that often yeah, and for me, as someone that makes music, it's definitely been quite educational, I suppose. Because, mm-hmm. um, I mean, he's been part of the songwriting for, well, Hybrid Theory, one of the greatest albums, I think, of all time. Um, just an invaluable kind of source of learning. But if you like music production, want to see kind of a bit of a peek behind the curtain, I'd definitely suggest checking it out. And then... Also, uh, Fallout Boy are set to play at Joe Biden's pre-inauguration ceremony uh, on January 17th. Amazing. Uh, it's just odd. It's not a band I thought would be doing it, but uh, f- fair play to them, I guess. Yeah, I never, ha- I never had Biden down as a Fallout Boy fan. No? No, it swerved me that. I definitely think he jams to Thanks for the Memories. I'm trying to imagine him with like a proper emo fringe and some eyeliner on. <laughs> Bopping along to thanks for the memories. All right. The first release I want to talk about is uh, Citizen's latest single called I Want to Kill You. Um, I think that I, it's a really nice evolution of their sound. Um, they're a band that have definitely like mixed it up from album to album and this just feels like a really nice step in a new direction does remind me a lot of a block party if anyone's familiar with block party i can yeah i can i can see why you say that they've certainly sort of gone from a gone sort of more down an indie route now i'd say they've introduced that kind of aspect to their sound now whereas they used to be a lot more emo i'd say yeah but i like it and i think they're a band as well they've got a range of emotions in their sound and when you hear them live it just becomes even more powerful and i think this song when it can be heard live will be amazing 
from from the first listen of this new song, I could already imagine it at a summer festival. Like sort of middle of the day, sort of two o'clock ish, beer in hand, bopping along. Slam dunk sort of anthem, yeah. Yeah. It's a really really nice chorus to this song, which I which I think is what sort of put me to that place. Yeah, definitely. James? Uh so this is a this is a band that I've not listened to before. Uh the intro got me quite intrigued, like the build up. Uh but for me it's kind of where it peaked a little bit. I I always were kind of when I find a new band or even a new song, I first listen always comes from like a drum perspective. And for me, like the drums stayed fairly basic, so it didn't grab me as much immediately. And um it sounds like an okay song. It doesn't majorly stand out for me. To me, it did sound like a song that uh, you get on FIFA. Uh, but then I am not well versed to FIFA. So I don't know what that means. Uh, just from soundtracks I've heard before being played. But it was okay. Um, personally, it's not again, it's not my cup of tea. But I can see where it is other people's cup of tea. I think we should kind of make a disclaimer that anything that's a bit lighter, that's like kind of <laughs> pop punk, indie, anything like that, is not James's normal cup of tea, so it just seemed a bit, a little bit plain to me. Um, I will listen, like you both, know, I will listen to pop punk, but it's got to grab me a little bit, and there's got to be something a little bit more unique to it. Um, something that's got to really get my attention. Basically, J- James, James likes a very aggressive cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, uh, not less, uh, Yeah, I can, I can see that, <laughs> but it's it's also got a for me. It's got to musically interest me. Um, and for me, like this, this didn't musically interest me, uh, so it didn't grab me as much as it would get other people. Um, but that's okay. Let them do their thing. I won't. I won't ever like shit on a band for doing what they want to do, unless it's like I don't know, special circumstances maybe. Um, I respect them. They play instruments. They write songs. They put themselves out there. Cool. And I think it's. Um... For people that are already fans of Citizen, they'll be happy with the song. I think I think so. Like 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 you touched on a minute ago, Alex. It sort of they progress their sound quite a lot, um, and introduce because on the on the previous album they started to introduce this almost indie sound, and they've sort of taken that a step further. I think with this song, and it's probably what it's probably an example of what the new album's likely to sound like as well. Yeah, and I'm really excited for it. Actually, I think it's going to be really good. Uh, moving on from that, we've got King 810's latest album. Uh, who wants to take this one first? I'm happy to. Um, I personally think they peaked at Memoirs, um, their first full length. They've kind of gone on, lost members, and they've kind of kept a King 810 sound and style. But for me, as it's gone on, especially after Liberty Moore, um, it's not really the same. Uh, there's some good songs out of it, like Hell Hounds got released early and House of Dust got released earlier, um, and they seem like quite good songs. Suicide Machines was quite a good song, good way to finish off the album. Um, but it's definitely not the peak of what I think I've heard from King 810. Uh, I expect a lot better from them, probably. And I think, from what I gather, it is all pretty much just David Gunn's project now. I don't think Eugene Gill, like they're the only two original members left now, the old drummer. And the old guitarist both left. And I think it's from what I hear, it's David Gunn just writing the albums himself. And I think he's getting a lot more of his solo project being drawn into it. And therefore, it's kind of taking away from the older King sound and changing them slightly. So they had their time for me, which was the first two albums. I will probably always keep an eye out on what they've put out in terms of songs and albums and content. But... um the way the last two albums have gone, Suicide King and H-A- AK Concerto for me, it's made me lose a bit of interest in seeing them live again, um, which is quite sad for me. But I know you've enjoyed them more than I have, Alex. I actually did. Um, my Upon first listen, I didn't like it. But I think it's an album... Sometimes bands release albums that kind of reward repeated listens. And I think this is one where you have to really sit with it for a while for things to start making sense um i think the first half of the album is much better than the last hellhounds like james said is a i think is a really good song i also enjoyed i am the enemy and red queen as well um but i think 
with King810, it's, I've got to the point where I used to listen to their albums all the way through. The first two, I think, they still hold up. But maybe now it's just a few songs here and there that I'll, I'll go back to. I don't think I'll listen to the whole album again. Um, I understand what they're trying to do with their sound, but I just don't think every song quite lands. Well, I've, I've never been sort of a massive fan of King 810. I've liked a few of their songs. Um, and what I liked in those songs was mainly sort of the spoken word aspect and the sort of, um, the delivery of the emotion, the sincerity behind the lyrics, um, sort of hearing all the sort of voice cracks and stuff um, from David Gunn. Um, but that's sort of disappeared from this album, I felt. Um, and maybe, I, I don't know if it, I kind of feel like they tried too hard on this album. Um, I know a lot of creative people say that sometimes their best work has come from when they weren't really thinking about it and it just sort of comes out, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and, and on this one, it feels like they've just tried to sort of replicate it and it hasn't happened. But there's a few there's a few sort of hooks and stuff that feel like they've just sort of been bashed into the song when it was all, it already would have been a good song without sort of the extra little hook in there. Mm. And I think lyrically as well, uh, there are only so many times they can kind of tread over old ground. So a lot of their identity is a band from that, but they have, they have a, they have a distinct image that uh, people have of them and they've kind of stuck to that throughout everything. Which you don't blame them for, but yeah, it's just a, a lot different compared to their older music. Yeah, but I mean, if, I think if you are an existing King 810 fan, the album might might be for you. But I don't think if you want to get into them, I don't think this is the album to start with. Uh, moving on, we've got 40 Roll by Chris Turner. Yeah, I think we'll go to James with this one to start with. I think I'll leave this. I definitely will. Um, I think if you're at all an Ocean's 8 Alaska fan, you know what to expect from anything Chris Turner related. Um, his first release as a solo artist, he never uses any triggers or samples and any drums you hear of anything released by him. Uh, he He's much like, he loves the natural sound of drums. He'll do everything one take. So if you ever see like videos of him, um, it has the album performance that he basically records in the studio at that time. And if he doesn't get it done perfectly in one take, he'll go back and do it again. He likes like that one take beautiful sound, which is absolutely fantastic. Great cymbal work and intricate double bass like you'd expect from him. To me, it reminds me of the Ocean's Eight Alaska instrumental releases they do, which to me is fantastic because they've had some issues with vocalists, especially like with the Hakari album. Um, and I think instrumentally for me they're very interesting I can watch the drum playthroughs that he does for hours I find them mesmerising um, I'm very much looking forward to it he's now got an album crowdfunded it happened within a week just before Christmas and it'll be releasing this year called Steezy so I'm for me I'm looking forward to this I'm looking forward to seeing what else can come from it but he's very much like a drummer's drummer so it's not always for everyone so for me it appeals because he can do things behind a kit which are absolutely phenomenal and I think I can appreciate a lot more than some other people might. So I'll always come at it from a favourable point of view. Uh, but yeah, I, I love it. I'm very looking forward to seeing what he can do for an album. Did he do Did he do all the guitar parts on this song as well? I don't think he did the guitar parts. I believe he's written them. He's done, He's got playthroughs up on his channel um, of other people doing them, I believe. Um I know he's got a lot of collaborations that are going to happen on this. It would be like his name underneath it. I think he's written all those parts and got a lot of guest performers. He's got some people doing, they're going to have some songs that are going to have vocals on them. Because I think he's going to have some guest vocalists on for it as well. That'll be interesting. So this one is an instrumental track. Um, there's going to be a bit of back and forth with it. But this is mostly what he's been up to um, in all the lockdown that he had last year. So I think it... Like the dedication he has to his craft to be insisting that these songs are like one take recordings is insane because he could make it easy for himself. Um, but it's just incredible that he's, you know, that committed to kind of the, the purity and integrity of his music that everything's going to be done in one take. Um, and I like that. 
and it's got a big fucking breakdown in it lovely breakdown in it like as well i i grew up watching like mike portnoy drum videos who is a fantastically intricate drummer but you'll see like in his drum videos if they do the whole playthrough of a song there's a lot of cut and paste and they'll like jump back in at different points um to replay over certain things which is what most drummers are going to do they're never going to do one takes you always hear about uh phil collins in band-aid went in and did that in one take and things like that and for me like seeing like a drummer at this capability doing these kind of songs in one take and absolutely flawlessly is um that's something very special i think uh james is going to mention mike portnoy in every episode portnoy bingo portnoy bingo <laughs> uh yeah dan you got anything to add to that i've got nothing else to add it rips <laughs> there you go there's the seal of approval from dan um and i guess the other uh release to talk about is of mice and men's single obsolete um I'll be honest, I, I've stopped listening to them since the Restoring Force album. Um, just because, you know, sometimes you go out of bands. Um, but I think this has got me back in. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And I think vocally it's miles beyond what Austin Carlyle was doing when he was in the band. I thought the exact same when I first listened. Um, there was, I was a massive fan of Mice and Men um, back around sort of 2010 even before then when i was back in school all you teeth in songs to my mates um and then they sort of just disappeared off the radar i don't know if it was to do with austin leaving or anything um but yeah they just kind of disappeared and went into obscurity for me um but this song's brought me straight back to sort of the old days of the mice and men and it instantly made me want to listen to their um self-titled album again yeah yeah, definitely. James? See, for me, surprisingly, uh, this was my first time ever actually listening to Of Mice and Men. I never listened to any of their songs before. There was a band that were on the radar, but I just never ended up getting around listening to. I think, I think you'll, have definitely, you'll have definitely heard some of their songs before and probably not known it was them. I may have done. I, I, I couldn't name anything off the top of my head. Um, but I've listened to Alex play them over the years and I could probably you could probably play a song and say it's them and I'd be like oh yeah I know that then but they've never been a band that on my own I've sat and listened to and then with everything that's gone on with Austin Carlisle like in the past few years it kind of put me off ever delving into them as a band but then hearing about this song and like kind of delving into it for the first time listening to them I really enjoyed it a lovely intro build a good catchy chorus um They've got an EP coming out soon, um, which I think I'm going to definitely have to give a listen to. It seems like a good time for me to get into Of Mice and Men off the back of this song. So I'm, I'm very much liked it. looking forward to seeing where it will go with the EP. Um, as well as looking at latest releases, we also want to talk about albums that we're currently enjoying or just finding. Um, and to kick it off this episode, I know that James has got an album that he wants to talk about. Yes, uh, Matriarch by Vale of Maya. It is an older band, older album. I think it was out in 2015. I discovered this uh, through a good old Jared Longy stream. He did a joint stream with Lauren Babick, uh, both from Crazy 88. And they started talking about how a new song had just been released by Vale of Maya. The singer Lucas uh, manages Lauren's other band, Red Handed Denial. Uh, and they were talking about how good a vocalist he is. And they started recommending to anyone who hadn't heard a new song they've released called Outsider in May last year to go and listen to it and check out them uh that then got me going into it i listened to outsider loved it and then started delving into more of their catalogue and i found this album um it has some fantastically diverse vocals it was the first album that lucas the singer joined on to i think like we said in the last one sam carter is kind of the epitome of technical vocals in the range um lucas magia has that as well he has several other side bands. He's got indie bands like rock bands. He does like rap artists and R&B. And his vocal style is very, very dynamic. Uh, for me, highlights of this album, uh, the song Mikasa, Ellie, Eris, and Phoenix. For me, it's some great metalcore. Uh, they've got a new album coming out soon. But yeah, Veiled by a Matriarch has been a, a new, new listen for me. And from start to finish, I think it's a fantastic album. 
The curse of living with James is that I have to listen to whatever he's listening to because he plays it so fucking loud all the time. Um, and so I've heard like bits and pieces of the album and it's easy to get into if just really good, good metalcore. There's some fantastic choruses in some of these songs that yeah, just kind of hook choruses. you right in. Um, Mikasa, definitely for sure. If you want, if you want one song recommendation off this, go listen to Mikasa. I, I agree with what you're saying about the vocals on there, because um, that's the first thing that struck me uh, with, the, with well, what you said about the choruses rather. Because um, that's probably the first thing that struck me when you mentioned this band was um, this album rather um, was the distinction between the sort of aggressive, harsh vocals in the verses and then the cleans in the chorus. I think that was something Lucas brought in himself a lot. Okay. Uh, he was he was known quite a lot, I think, in the Canada area uh, for his music. They used to be a big deathcore band. And then kind of with this album, they changed into more of a metalcore vibe with some of those cleaner vocals that you're going to have as kind of typical of that genre. Um, so I think that's where this was like a big change in them. And they've, they've started coming on more of a rise recently since he became the vocalist. They've kind of burst through into a bit of a bigger mainstream audience slightly. Um, so I'm excited to see where they can go with that and with a new album coming out this year um, I'm very much going to be on the lookout for that so expect a review possibly uh, and I know both of you guys have been jamming Sleep Tokens album Sundowning hell yeah um, I love it I discovered it sort of early last year I believe I think Sundowning first came out in 2019 um, and if I'd actually discovered it at the time it would have been my album of the year for sure um, but in terms of discoveries, they were definitely um, my favourite discovery of last year. And yeah, that album's just been on repeat constantly for me pretty much since. Because you introduced me to them as well. I did. We were in my car and I was like, James, you need to listen to this band. <laughs> and I think we I think we sat there for about 20 minutes or so with me just showing you the song. Oh, yeah. Because I think the first one was The Offering, which is still my favourite song of the album. Um. I remember you talking to me about them before and it you said it perfectly. It's one of those rare bands that a lot of times when people give me new music, I kind of like, okay, compare it to someone so I've got a bit of an idea of what I'm going in with. And you were saying you can't really compare this to anything, no. um, which is very intriguing. And then like the diversity of the music, like one moment you can have some heavy riffs and some harsher vocals, and then it will all drop out into a piano part with some great vocal melodies. Um, I think they're, they're very good at just expertly layering the music i think i think jaws is the the song jaws is their best example i think it just starts with just sort of a sort of beepy kind of synth in the background and then some guitar comes in and then some vocals and then the drums start coming in and then the guitar comes in and then it all just sort of builds into this massive crescendo and then it goes quiet again at the end it's like you're really thinking of music in a 3d kind of atmosphere yeah like from all different directions. Big brain um, songwriting time. And so the songs are so different. Yeah, and the, the songs are so very different. Like Levitate, different, then you got Higher, Take Aim. Um, it's, it's a fantastic album. Very, very good album. Something else I like about this band as well is their sort of... Um, the word's gone. We'll have to cut this, but... <laughs> no, I'm going to leave it in. Uh, loathe? No, 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 I want to find my point. Come on, Dan. You can get there. Um, you can do this, Dan. We believe in you. The way they look. What's the, fan what's the <laughs> fancy way of saying... I image? Let's go with image. Image is a good word. Let's go with image. Something else I really like about this band is their image that they go with. They sort of go down the whole mask route, but unlike Slipknot, where you know who's behind the masks, no one really has any idea of who's there. And because they're still quite a small band, they might be able to keep that up for quite a long time. Which is difficult in this kind of day and age, isn't it? Well, it must be so tempting to go, okay, my band's getting quite big now. I want to be famous. But they've done like the opposite, especially with how much credit the vocalist gets for how good he is. Everyone kind of really wants to know who he is. I remember seeing Sam Carter tweets about him before. Yeah, there's been speculation. There's people saying that they reckon it's Sam Smith. Really? doing sort of a, a metal alternative project um other people have said it's dan from bastille rob damiani from don broco has been brought up a bit it's like being on the mars singer wow. it is 
It is. <laughs> Um, my latest discovery has been Load's album, I Let It In and It Took Everything. Um, the thing that stands out to me is kind of like the soundscape that they create. Um, it feels more like you're stepping into a world rather than just listening to music. Um, there are like samples and sounds and just things that they do that just make it a really interesting listen. Um, and I really like the u the use of transition songs and like interludes. Um, I think they make what is normally just a collection of songs feel like an album to me. Um, and I think that there's such a like wide variety of kind of moods as well. Um, there are songs on this album that like almost belong, feel like they should be on separate albums, but in a way they still kind of belong together. I agree with you. I agree with you with your comment on um, interludes and transitions. I really like the way they've used that on this album. And like you said, it's it's hard to describe, but saying that it creates a, its own world is probably the right way of, of putting it, I'd say. Yeah, and I think it's. I'd be really interested to see it live as well. Well, ideally, if everything goes to plan, we could see them live on Saturday at Download, but let's see what happens with the year yeah i think they're also meant to be at 2000 trees but again we'll have to wait and see i th I really enjoy it um i want to delve more into their music listening off the back of this i think they've got very high potential to be a band that i could really really get into they've got a very interesting sound as well um i think i think i was listening to the veil of my album and then when it comes on to shuffle afterwards i was having a lot of loathe come on afterwards and that got me listening to them quite a bit um, I think like Aggressive Evolution and Broken Vision were the, were the first ones I properly got into and um, no, I very, very much like it I'm exciting they're coming out of the UK as well so a good band that we might get a chance to see in a small little club somewhere maybe eventually yeah that'll be really cool looking ahead to next month there's a few albums that we're all excited for and we think that you guys at home should keep an eye out for um, we've got Foo Fighters Medicine at Midnight on the 5th of February uh, Love and Death have got Perfectly Preserved on the 12th Nothing Nowhere is releasing Trauma Factory on the 19th. And then on the 26th, we've got two releases. We've got For Those That Wish To Exist by Architects and Of Mice and Men's Timeless EP. Uh, James, you got one that you're excited for the most? Uh, I kind of have two joint. I think one for all three of us, no matter or the ones that we're going to be interested in, is going to be Architects. Uh, we've all seen them multiple times live. Very interested we're going to go, they're going to go with this new album. I've had a couple of new songs being released. I'm expecting maybe another one just before the album drops. Um, but for that one, I'm very interested in. And the other one is Love and Deaths, Perfectly Preserved. Uh, it's their second album uh, after their first one was released in 2013. It's been quite a while. They've released two new songs. Uh, one of them, which is Down, which is very kind of similar to their sound. And then White Flag, which is a little bit of an evolution, a little bit different. I think they've got a guest... Uh, musician on there as well if i remember rightly um but that to me is something that i'm keeping an eye on particularly i think it goes without saying that i can't wait for the new architects album um i also i'm also really looking forward to the new nothing nowhere album trauma factory um i've really got into him over the past sort of year or so um he sort of straddles this sort of line between emo hip-hop and punk sort of jumping between those three sort of sectors uh he's worked recently with travis barker on an ep i think it was late 2019 um and on the songs he's released so far which are going to be on the upcoming album it sounds like he's had a bit of an influence on some of his songwriting because the choruses are, are much better than they used to be now but it still has the same nothing nowhere vibe than it did before so yeah i'm looking forward to that you've picked that up a lot so I'm kind of interested to hear what that's going to be. I've not delved too much into that, but after hearing what you've said about it before, um, I'm, I'm keeping an eye out for that for sure as well. What about you, Alex? Um, yeah, Architects, as we all said, is just is going to be phenomenal. And I think now I'm really excited to see what this of my so many P is going to be like. Because um, I'm really, I'm on the hype train at the moment. On the same day as Architects, isn't it? Yeah, what a day. Yeah, and you'll get some of our reviews 
for those releases in the next episode. It's that or this. Hey. Oh, it's time for that or this again. I'm looking forward to this shit. Uh, this go. month's theme is New Year, New Me. Uh, people use the New Year as a time to reinvent themselves, change it up a bit, do something new. But I struggle to think of a way to relate that to music. So instead, I've just picked a band's debut album and then their sophomore album. And I want you guys to tell me which one you prefer. I, f- I feel like this is going to be hard. Okay, Dan. First up, you've got modern baseball sports versus you're gonna miss it all. Yeah, this is hard. <laughs> it's like choosing between two of my children, my beautiful, messed up, sad little children. Um, but I think I've got to go for you're gonna miss it all, just because of the. Uh, Pretty much every single song on there is a banger. All right, next I got Boston Manor with Be Nothing versus Welcome to the Neighborhood. Again, I, I love Be Nothing. It's sort of everything I like about... It sort of really represents my music taste in terms of just hard-hitting, pop-punky kind of vibes. But as an album, I think Welcome to the Neighborhood tops it. Yeah, I agree with that as well. And lastly for you, Dan, the story so far is under soil and dirt versus what you don't see. I'm not even going to hesitate with this one. It's under soil and dirt. It just, it just is better. Too many bangers to, to not go with it, really. Iconic. All right, James, you ready? Go on, then. All right, first up, you've got Azalea Dying with Frail Words Collapse versus Shadows of Security. Um, ooh. I feel like Frail With Collapse has got a few absolute top tier metalcore songs but I think as a whole album Shadows of Security is a bit more solid so I'm going to go with that cool fair enough next up Stone Sour's self-titled debut versus Come Whatever May oh I love the rawness of the first album um Second one's got some fantastic songs. Um, Three Glass is iconic, but I think the the rawness as soon as you have Get Inside when you open up the debut. Um, yeah, first one. Fair enough. And last up for you, James, Slipknot self-titled versus Iowa. Oh, oh, this is like choosing between my children. Um, but your children are even more fucked oh, damn. than mine. Oh, they, they, I mean, they were huffing dead crows. <clears throat> they were burning each other on stage. My modern baseball children were just getting upset about girls in high school. <laughs> um, see, the debut is iconic. It was something very new. But I think I'm going to go with Iowa. I think it's one of the greatest metal albums from start to finish. Um, and I think, like, from 515 all the way up until Iowa at the end, you go on a journey of anger and just pure raging chaos and i think it's fantastic so I it's not a happy journey is it anger and rage it's not but it's a journey <laughs> and rage so much rage so much rage all right these last three are for both of you i might join in as well actually um all right first up while she sleeps this is the six versus brainwashed okay um i'm gonna go with brainwashed because I became a fan of them just before it came out. Um, and I remember kind of hearing that album and Dan introducing me to it and being very excited for that release. So um, uh, Brainwash holds a special place for me. So, yeah. I think I prefer this to the six. And I don't really know why. I think maybe... I think maybe... I think maybe there's more individual songs that I could pick out from This Is The Six that I like over the songs on Brainwashed. But yeah, obviously, obviously I love both albums, but I think This Is The Six edges it for me. A Brainwashed, I think. Yeah, Brainwashed. I think it's just a, from start to finish, I enjoy it a bit more. I think I skip a bit more when I listen to This Is The Six. Really? It's a close margin. It's not by much, but I think I just prefer Brainwashed. 
Mm -hmm. uh, next, we've got Beartooth, Disgusting versus Aggressive. Uh, I love Aggressive, but Disgusting 100% of the way. I, I, I love that album. I absolutely love that album. It's fantastic. So I don't need to say much more. The lines, just kick it off with that and it's beautiful. Yeah. I agree. Disgusting. There's, it's a no-brainer for me. Aggressive is all right, but... Yeah, it's nowhere near the previous. The emotion behind the album is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Especially as there's a couple of songs from that album that Caleb doesn't even want to play live. Yeah, I think it, it holds like a mystique. Uh, oh, I just love it. Alex? Yeah, disgusting as well, definitely. Okay, we are unanimous. Yeah. All right, last up, Net Deep, Wishful Thinking versus Life's Not Out to Get You. Oh... Okay, I'm going to have to pull up them in front of me with track listings a little bit here because this is interesting. Well, James does that. I'm going to say that it's a no-brainer and it's life's not out to get you, hands down. I it's, agree. It's one of the best pop-punk albums ever written, I think. And I'm not being dramatic. I, I, I hesitate a little bit because I love, I think, the start of Wishful Thinking. Like the first five, six songs in particular. Um, it's fast-paced, it's fun. In your face, great pop punk. But then looking over the whole of Life's Not Out to Get You, uh, it's solid. It's so solid. Um, it's one of the few neck deep albums I think I can listen to from start to finish and enjoy every song. So, yeah, Life's Not Out to Get You. We'll go with that. Cool. There we go. That was fun, wasn't it? Some of those were difficult. Very difficult. That's what I want. I just want to throw some curveballs at you guys you just you just want us to have some light mental breakdowns yeah which makes it fun doesn't it all right it's time for the featured song uh this is a segment where we give an independent band or artist a platform to you know be heard be exposed to new people uh and this week we've got oxfordshire three-piece chi um they're rooted in hip-hop, but what I love about them is that they kind of don't see themselves as being set to a genre. Um, you know, I had a conversation with one of the members, and it really came across that this is a group that want to explore as many different styles as possible. Um, trap, boom bap, spoken word, house, techno. Um, it just really resonates that this is a group that love all forms of music and want to create as much as they can. Um, you know, they told me that they take influences from everywhere, artists like Kendrick Lamar, Slow Tie, JPEG Mafia. Um, and I really love that about a band. Um, and the song that we've got today is called Perfect Mistake. It's actually an unreleased song. So this is an exclusive for the show. Um, but it's a super chill track. It's so nice to listen to. Um, they're quite poetic to listen to, I think. Um, and that's the, like the kind of, that's the hip hop that I like. It's like really conscious lyricism and Really nice to listen to, really beautiful to listen to, and it's a great song. Sit back and watch the sun fade to the moon. 
to the moon yeah. It's soon the gloom still got me dreaming of another's time All the time I'm not Keanu, none of five for the office time I'm a humble guy, I'd rather maybe be some other place right now I'm lost, I can't see life now I used to be relevant, elegant I don't like talking about elegance yeah, yeah. In my ivory tower, I'm coasting on my elephant of excellence Your name could be Ang, traditionally sung, yeah, master of the element Sung was my name when I live in my dream town I signed off my name to a corporate big crown A gown of fate, got me tripping as I lay My feet, their weight, and the prints is laid And my slippers are glass, left nothing but shards So I turn to the path of divinity Riddle with lies, my fucking adaptation with the trinity Carry Ann Moss, better sit on my face I call Jerry Hogarth when I pick up a case of what? Puri THC, mix it with some CBD Token with poses, man, these people really are not for me Incredible stories, man, I'll believe it when I see it G, apparently flourish, but I'm hearing it when you go off key Dirty ash for masquerade, that's not for me Making beats and getting paid and what the free Imperfect, I'll make mistakes, but still gon' eat Gold-plated cutlery, munching on Markleberry <laughs> Rap snitches never know they cue You under pressure so you overdo I need fame, money, think it's overdue yeah. Selling out, I play it like the who yeah. be be Beats homegrown in London I ship them to LA Network the industry, send my wiki Just my Twitter page Handled the enemies like I'm Thanos on his wedding day I'm diamond in the rough You like needle in the fucking hay It's perfect mistake to make To wait for waiting to sit Till it's a perfect mistake to make We've made a little playlist that you can find in the description that includes all of our featured songs and we'll continue to add to it every episode. Um, but because this week is an unreleased song, we've included their song Taxi Driver instead. Uh, so you can go check that out, give the playlist a follow. Alright, this month's discussion is should virtual gigs continue after the pandemic? Uh, who wants to kick it off? I'm happy to give it a good start. Um, it's been nice seeing how they've become a good part of like, music culture. Uh, it's nice to see more and more bands giving them a go. You're seeing virtual festivals, which I think are quite fun. It's a good way for people who want to go to gigs like us to kind of get that energy, get that kind of enjoyment out of seeing live music still without obviously being able to go to a venue and do that, as it's going to be probably a while before we can still. Um, for me, I've had some good bands that I've seen like Trivium. It's been a highlight for me. They did it off the back of an album release. Bands are always going to want to tour in order to promote their new albums and new releases. So this is the best alternative you're going to get for it. Um, any kind of live performance that I can find, I try and watch. I can be in rabbit holes on YouTube of watching bands from like Vans Warped Tour, from other headline tours they've done that have been filmed. So for me, I love watching live music still, even just to relax. Another one that stood out for me personally was the Architects one. They've been in new music. It's a great chance to kind of get your band out there again what i'd like to see for it is maybe more like a gig kind of bill where you can have your headline band and maybe a couple of support bands and use as a platform for some smaller bands to maybe get on this as well so i would have liked to have seen possibly architects maybe get one smaller band on as well um obviously they've got to try and do it for themselves and make it financially viable but um it's as close to gigs as we're going to get currently, so I'm all for it. Uh, whether it continues after the pandemic, who knows? There's bands like Trivium who do constant Twitch stream sets. Uh, whenever they're on tour every day, you can kind of tune in and watch their stream sets. So whether it continues, maybe we just have certain special events. But for me, I'd like to see them continue, but under the right kind of circumstances. That's a really interesting point you made about support bands being on it, because I never even thought about that that there are going to be bands out there that can't do this, that actually, you know, they needed to be on bills as a support band for real gigs and they still need it now. Look at the amount of times the three of us have gone to a gig. Um, 
and like you'll go there you'll kind of have a drink once you get into the venue you'll kind of like scope out the, the area where you want to go and get into the pit or whatever like that like i'm like yeah i want to be right in the middle you kind of scope out the venue and you sit there or stand there have a drink and you watch the sport bands and that's a great way to introduce like these bands to new fans and like we've seen support bands that we've loved we've seen support bands that we're not so keen on um i found new bands i remember seeing uh blood youth i think it was supporting bear tooth Correct. band was Birmingham. It? yeah and i remember that was it and i remember seeing that and being like you know what they're a really good band let me check more of them out so it's a great way of finding these smaller bands and it's what they rely on to get to a bigger audience so without that for them it's going to be more of a struggle yeah, I agree. Dan, you got any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, live streams are a really good idea. Um, they don't, they obviously can't replace and replicate what an actual live show in person is like. Um, it's, they certainly lack the atmosphere um, most of the time. Um, but I think they will continue, but it just won't be in the same sort of realm as they have been. Um, I think. They're great in terms of accessibility for the fans because there's certain, there's some fans that aren't going to be able to actually get to gigs in person, um, whether it be for for physical reasons or others. Um, so for them, it would be great if those can continue because then they can sort of still experience their favourite bands in a live environment without actually going there. Um, for the artists, it's really helpful because they've only got to play one show, but they can sell tickets to pretty much everyone around the world. So then they're getting sort of the same monetary benefit but from just doing one show rather than a whole tour so in terms of saving time but still making money that's quite a good thing for them and james touched on the idea that they and this is where i think they'll most likely be used um they'll be great to promote albums so for example the the biffy clyro one that i that i watched earlier last year um they pretty much just played their new album in full um, they they use sort of the inside and the outside of the Barrowlands in Glasgow, I think it is. Um, so I think that's that's where we'll probably see virtual gigs and live streams utilised the most. Um, it, it could also be sort of part of an album pre-order. We often see pre-order bundles where you can get like a T-shirt and a CD and stuff. Um, and they could bundle in a, a live stream show ticket with that. I like that idea. I really like that idea. Yeah. I think they're amazing. I think they yeah, they should continue. And I think, I know I said it last episode, but I'll bang on about it again. But watching Code Orange's streams, um, you know, they, they took what would be the time in a show where bands would talk to the crowd and have a bit of interaction and replaced that with kind of like visual elements, you know, little like videos and like segmented clips to kind of theme the whole show. And I think... Those kind of things make for a fan an experience that you couldn't otherwise get. Um, and I think if it's used well, it can be done, you know, really, really well to make a really good experience for everyone. I think the only thing is, I mean, we won't know about it, but how expensive these things are to do for bands. Um, you know, you look at architects playing to no one in the Royal Albert Hall and you know wonder with all the production that went into it how many online tickets they need to sell because if if people are going to be going to shows in a year or time year or so then the virtual tickets will drop and then it just becomes a debate of whether or not enough people are still getting virtual tickets for it to be viable what i then see is that the venues then need to recognize that they're not going to get any revenue at the moment any but you look at say for us there's o2 academies that we go to a lot a lot they're not going to have anyone going through the doors at the moment if they can appeal to maybe smaller bands around and say look we'll even do a discounted rate they need the revenue as much as the bands need the exposure i think it becomes a part of the industry pulling together and not charging say full price for something like that but they need the revenue they need the money coming in the bands want the exposure possibly to do that let's come to some kind of agreement that benefits everyone here I think what you mentioned, Alex, about the, the production levels of these live streams, I think that's actually a benefit of them in the way that architects, for example, they they would have used so much production that they couldn't take on tour with them. 
and um, because they've only, because they've only got to use it for this one off performance for this one off recording they can just go all out and use whatever they want basically on this one live stream yeah that's true so in, so in a way that's another positive of them um i know james you mentioned architects and trivium um did you have a favorite one that you saw or have seen so far I think the Trivium one for me because the album had just come out. Um, it was their most critically and probably fan acclaimed album they've had out for a while. And the live stream to support that was absolutely fantastic. Um, I know there were bands that did it earlier on, but from what I saw, they were the first major band to do that. And I think still are kind of one of the most major bands to do it as well to this day. So for me, that, that was quite a special one to see. Um, of them trying to be a bit ahead of the curve obviously taking i think the code orange one you've mentioned was before that um but i think like seeing a higher level band do that the next one i can think of close to that was architects so um that that was a special one for me dan got a favorite uh, i think my favorite one like i mentioned i mentioned it earlier was the the biffy clara one that barrow lands um they did quite an interesting thing they did it in sort of three separate parts um the first part was they labelled it as a sound check, where they pretty much just played a few older songs in the full band. Um, and then I think after about 15 minutes of that, they moved to uh, the warm-up or the green room. I can't remember what they called it. Um, but they just played a couple of acoustic songs backstage. Um, and then they went into the full full production set, which they, they basically just played their, their new album, A Celebration of Endings, in full. And they utilised the whole venue as well where before they'd, they'd they'd just be limited to the stage obviously they'd do a bit on the stage a bit with some sort of fancy lighting in the middle of the crowd and um, they had like a big glass box that they went in for a song um, and they even went outside the venue and down the stairs for for a little bit as well so yeah i really i really enjoyed that one uh, special mention as well to um the fever 333 one um right at the start of the lockdown yeah. Um they're literally just in a, a box with screens all around them with loads of nice visuals and stuff on. Um and also and also a more a more recent one as well. Um Post Malone did a live stream with a full band on New Year's Eve. Um which I've I've not seen before. Him with a full band is something I'd love to see live now because it, it just sounded so much bigger and better. Um, and, and, and was it doing his songs or and he did covers? a 30 minute set of his songs and then 30 minutes um he had chad smith from red hot chili peppers um oh wow slash was there um there was someone else there but i can't remember who it was um someone someone from jane's addiction i think they did um an alice in chains cover and a black sabbath cover oh cool so that was really cool but the, but the Biffy but the Biffy Clara one was my favourite. Yeah, Alex. Um, I mean, I won't go on about it anymore. But it was Code Orange. So <laughs> to say something else, um, I want to give a shout out to Lewis Watson, who's like an acoustic singer songwriter, um, and he was doing at the start of the lockdown in March last year, five days a week streaming on Twitch. Um, it's now down to three days a week, um, and that kind of is a different experience because you know he's interacting with like the chat on twitch and it's um you know you can speak to bands in a much more personal way um request songs things like that have a bit of a laugh with them um and he's just been constantly three days a week doing like pretty lengthy streams he did a 12 hour stream um where he played through his entire discography um yeah and i just i've really enjoyed tuning in because they're the kind of things that you you don't need to see them every every time you can just kind of pick and choose when you want to drop in and see them and they've all been really really good that's another interesting aspect as well is that it doesn't have to be all of these high production ticketed events that a lot of them have been it can all it can also just be simply like with that someone just streaming in their bedroom or in their studio yeah. or something um have we got any dream bands we want to see have a virtual gig? I've got two. Go on. I've got two. Um, I think, bear in mind, they've had an album they've been write, writing, uh, which is very nearly done. I'd love to see uh, While She Sleeps use the Sleeps Warehouse 
and do a cool little set out of that. Maybe we're going to get something with the album coming out soon. Uh, so maybe that's me just putting it out as well into the world and being like, please let that happen. But that'll be quite a cool thing to do. And they have their warehouse as well. Yeah, that's yeah. So if they do that in the warehouse, that would be fantastic. The other one, I think, purely just for the visuals, is uh, a Slipknot show. There's so much you could do for that. I think visually they are an astounding band for the stage show they put on. The pyro, the screens, the drum risers, I think would be fantastic. Maybe put something with like a 10 different camera kind of watch option where you can have like a general kind of view that you'd get from watching any stream. But you can have like a central camera to each of the musicians and members on the stage like for me i'd sit and watch a jay weinberg drum cam throughout the whole thing compared to just watching the whole thing uh the stage show they put on the set list they could have you could see whole albums being done um you, the whole of iowa could be streamed and i think that would make fans go absolutely crazy so two very different kind of ways they do live streams from a warehouse or a massive stage production with so many different camera options and a massive set list you could do uh, but both would be ones that I'd very much look forward to nice Dan James of course has taken both of my suggestions that I had prepared <laughs> I, I knew he'd say well she sleeps so I, I thought oh well, I'll have someone else ready just in case and he's taken Slipknot as well but <laughs> my bad but I will echo what he said about while she sleeps and I don't know many bands that are any DIY bands at least that are as creative as those guys are so I think, like you mentioned, with with them having the space of the of the warehouse, um, I think they've come up with something really interesting and really entertaining, um, and they could mm -hmm. link it with the Sleep Society, perhaps. Ooh. Yeah, I think that's very high possibility that'll happen. Good job, we're all members. Yay! Uh, I had exactly the same two bands. <laughs> <laughs> it shows how similar we are. So what we expect. Uh... I'll think on my feet, and I'll say. Uh, the acoustic duo, This Wildlife, um, because, well, one, they're acoustic, so I think logistically it could be quite easy for them. Um, but also that they quite often build their own sets for their tours. Um, they, I think they built like a, a lighthouse and a boat that had like lights, like a lighting rig in it, things like that. Um, so they could rustle up a little homemade kind of set to perform on i think that'd be really cool to see hmm. let us know at home if you've watched a live stream that you enjoyed or you've got a band out there that you want to see do one why don't you leave it in the comments all right album recommendations time uh my recommendation this month is mad villainy by mad villain which is an album made by rapper mf doom and producer madlib um, if you like hip hop, it's worth checking out, definitely. Lyrically, it's amazing. The production is amazing. Um, and it's just a really, really easy album to get into if, you, if you're new to hip hop as well. Um, I know that's two episodes in a row that I've not said like something heavy, but I'll make it up next time. <laughs> There's an imposter among us. <laughs> Dan? Um. I'm going to recommend an album that came out almost a year ago now. Um, and actually two years ago to the day, the three of us saw them live, supporting Architects. Um, and that is Polaris from Australia. Um, around the, the album uh, Death of Me came out at the start of February last year, I believe. Um, and it seems like they learnt a bit from being on tour from Architects because they really stepped up sort of the intricacy um, and the sort of prowess of their guitar riffs on this one. Um, I'd say it's it's just a really, really solid metalcore album. Um, great clean vocals on the choruses. Great heavy bits and everything in between. Nice. It's interesting. They've been a band that I've needed to delve into for a while, I think. Um, that gives me a fantastic excuse to do that, I think. Um I've had that album downloaded for a while and not delved into it too much. Heard bits and pieces, but I will give that a deep dive on your recommendation, Dan. Good. Uh, I have the one that I mentioned earlier, Veil of My Matriarch. Started getting hyped because they're going to have some new songs uh, being released soon, I believe. 
uh, one that kind of think flew under the radar uh, at the start of 2021. Uh, this is where I'm going to get some fantastic brother points in here. CM oh, Chunk no. released uh, Mix 2 called Submerge. Oh, he said it. Uh, I feel like the artist should uh, tell you more himself oh. right now. I can tell Alex is hating this. Oh. <laughs> uh, Go on, buddy. Oh, I've blindsided you. I've blindsided uh, you. I make lo-fi hip-hop, like chill beats, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's 18 minutes long. It's You know, it's nothing really if you... Just want something to chill to, study to, you know, cook, clean, sleep, whatever. Um, All the mundane things that you do in yeah. your day-to-day lockdown life. But you can make them all better by listening to them. Uh, CM Junk on all platforms. Uh, I'll, I'll put some of the links in the description. Fucking hell, you've absolutely... Yeah. But I get the special privilege of being able to hear it all behind the scenes. Mm. And this mix two that you put out, um, not dogging on mix one at all, but it's you've put another level above it. And I've seen the work you've put into it. I'm really proud of you as a brother. Um, and I want to see you get some good success with it. And I know you're working hard on mix three ready. Uh, but everyone else, go listen to mix two. Go listen to Submerge. Go download it. Go stream their absolute shit out of it. And give my brother a bit of love with that thank you james <laughs> oh. yeah i guess it's all right oh cheers Dan. <laughs> well there we go the end of another successful episode podcast two like comment subscribe all that shit it does help us out uh you know helps us grow and reach more people and if you've got music you want to share to us let us know uh if you're a local band if you're an independent artist Look at the description. There's an email there. Send your music to us. Give us stuff to listen to. Yeah. We'll give you good opinions on it, hopefully, if we like it. Um, but use it as a platform. Get yourselves out there. Also, if there's any albums coming out soon that we haven't mentioned that you're really looking forward to, let us know because we want to know what we've missed. Dan, got anything to plug? I don't think I have anything new to plug. I do have a blog, uh, The Bird Box. Again, links will be in the description. James? Uh, I have another podcast. We talk mixed martial arts. Um, there's a big fight week happening in a few days. Uh, Conor McGregor is coming back and hopefully Dustin Poirier is going to knock him the fuck out. Um, so go check out the Interim Title podcast where we basically just chat shit about MMA and fighting. Cool. And I'll, I'll say it again. CM Junk everywhere. Those are, those are my <laughs> beats. Should we say bye? Bye-bye. Bye. Aesthetics. It was aesthetic.